like artists. I like talking with artists. I like talking with people. I like exchanging ideas. I like seeing things as they happen. I like figure, fumbling my way through and figuring it out as I go. What was your master's in? My master's was in art history. No, I no, no, with, the, oh, the topic. Yeah, the topic. I worked, I did a master's on Claude Toussignan. I, this was another suggestion by a professor, because she, I was at the Belfay Gallery at the time, and Jacques Belfay wanted to work with Claude, this, uh, so, um, I was, I was, I, my initials topic was, uh, Bonsoir, and that was misguided. Um, it's a too much of a, of an ample topic to begin, at that stage I was working, and so, anyways, it was a bad time to be, try to do a revisionist history of putting me at that time was not a good idea. So uh, I was a kind of in, con in, 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 in conflict, or in kind of, uh, like I didn't know what to do, and Constance uh, Lambert said, well, what about, what, what can the gallery give you? Working quite a bit, like what can it, what can it give you? What, what are your options there? Isn't it, I heard that something's happening with Claude at the gallery, and I said, yeah, well, so why don't you call Claude and see maybe you can do something with him? And at that time, she, and she also s suggested that I do something that's more pragmatic, um, something that would be like a catalog. So which, which I did, so I contacted Claude, I said, Claude, why don't we do a catalogue raisonné of one aspect of your practice? Like you've been making, he's been working work since 1953, 54, if you want to go back that far, um, to, and still making work, and he'd been making work throughout, non-stop. He goes to the studio every day, he's very d dedicated. And uh, so he, he suggested that we work on the monochromes, which was his latest period, which is hilarious, because it's now 30 years <laughs> of it. Um, it started in the late 70s, early 80s, and uh, at the time this was 96, I guess, 94, around there, and uh, no, later than that. Yeah, 94, 96. Mid-90s. Mid-90s. Jeez. God damn. Uh, yeah, let's not talk about that. Um, at that point, he'd been still working on monochromes. He just had a big shot, peinture, peinture, a big sort of renewal around that type, that body of work. So he was very keen on having scholarship dedicated to that because there hadn't been graffiti, which was true, but there had been some. So I decided to work with him on that, on a catalogue raisonné of his monochromes, and I was supposed to write a short introduction. That short introduction blossomed into a hundred-page essay, uh, and uh, and uh, it was a hundred pages of text and a hundred artworks. So. It was all right. It was a, 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 a significant piece of literature, and then when I started working here, like they knew, and, and uh, so I started working on the on the Toussignan retrospective with Paulette Gagnon, who was chief curator at the time, and we worked on that show together. Cool. Um, what's a typical day in the life of a curator here? Uh, a typical day is there in the life of a curator here is to uh, a lot of troubleshooting. It's a great deal of troubleshooting because the curators at the Musée d'Art Contemporain are also the project managers, and in a very hands-on way, um, it's we don't hand off a work, a list of works, to somebody and then the show happens. Mm -hmm. We do that part, but we hand the, sh the list of works off to ourselves, and um, and then we do a lot of the coordinating when it comes to that. So there's a lot of troubleshooting that's involved in uh, uh, making sure that the permissions are sent the right people for loans, making sure that you've secured the loans, making sure you're following up with the right things at the right time, following up with artists, making sure images come in on time for the catalog, making sure, because we do a lot of that too, we, we kind of manage the manuscript before it's sent off to publications, the responsible publications manages the manuscript once it's a full complete. So we do, we do a lot of that. Um, so the typical day is a lot of you can you can you can kind of get lost in in sort of answering emails and doing all that, and then there's also unsolicited, unsolicited uh, dossiers. There's um, uh, events. There's representation. Like you have to be out and about, kind of um, as much as as possible within the realms of reasonable. Social activities. <laughs> and interlopers like myself coming in and wanting to talk. Yeah, so we we also do re respond to uh, requests for interviews. So we do a lot. So we do a lot of we do a lot of that. But there's also the whole planning part too. Within all that, we do research, and, and that's probably the most fun part. And you want to you you want to do you don't want to just do incidental research, um, which is what you happen to see at the time. So that's 
when you're walking around, which is fine. I think incidental research is, has its merits. I think definitely you can, it's um, ground work, groundwork. Um, when you're doing crits at, uh, at MFA for MFA students, uh, year end and thesis, um, and when you're doing gallery visits, and when you're doing just off the internet, stuff that's sent to you unsolicited, that can like spark connections. Um, so you, you manage that. You manage that information. That's one thing we do a lot. Is we manage a great deal of that information, and then you, you start to think of potential programming. And um, like I work more mainly in programming, uh, whereas the curator of the collection, Jose Bidid, works mainly in um, in collections. Um, I have worked. I have programmed a show from the collections since I've been here, which was really great. We, I have suggested acquisitions that have gone through. I've suggested other acquisitions that haven't gone through. Um, but it's more like our main, the main focus of myself and uh, Leslie Johnston, who works here with me as my colleague, is exhibitions. Whereas other people like François Le Tourneur, who's in charge of exhibitions part-time, half-time, and the other half of the time he's um, in charge of public programming. So he'll do the, the stern um, symposium and uh, other talks, artists' mm -hmm. talks, and so on and so forth. So he's kind of like a two-headed beast, whereas the rest of us work in, in, in programming and older collections. And so there's a lot of that. Yeah. Are you working on any specific uh, project now? I'm working on the Quebec Triennial mm -hmm. that's coming back. Yes, like a Quebec cool. Triennial Roman numeral two is coming back in October as opposed to the summer, which is. Mm -hmm. One of the many things that make this a weird triennial, uh, or weird biennial, if you want to use the generic term for these type of events, as a biennial that happens every three years. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, and anything more long term than that? And long, like right after that, it's actually we're I'm kind of in a big bottleneck. It's that actually, and then after that, oh, then I'm I'm good till fall 2012, where I'm working on possibly two things. One thing for sure is the I'm working on a show of Pierre Dorian's work, a large exhibition uh, that will take up as many galleries as the Henri Sala show, for example, yeah. had. Um, and we're working on a, on a kind of a, a tight concept around that show, um, with a major publication accompanying that, with at least, uh, an essay by myself, but also by two, at least two guest writers. We've located one, and we're thinking on another possibly a fourth essay would be in there. And the, the, the scope of the book will be wider than the scope of the show. The idea is to not make just an echo, a book version of the show, is to make the book its kind of its own thing, more of a complete monograph. Yeah, it's sort of like the Jewish painters of Montreal that's in the book yeah, pulled off. Yeah, exactly. That type of idea, to make it, to just to widen the scope of the, of, of, of the questions mm -hmm. that, that can be raised by. So working on that, and uh, at the same time, there's this... Um, we're still, it's not quite official yet, but we're working on, on this possibility of, of uh, uh, participating along with other Montreal uh, artists and centers and galleries in this exchange with Brooklyn. So hosting a show that would come here and then that would go there, that would be at the same time as the Pierre Dorian show. So I don't know if I'm going to be the one who's going to be Be, be careful with that. Last time they tried to do some sort of exchange like yeah, that. Yeah, the, 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 the World awesome. Trade Center. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. That with the, yes, that's right. <laughs> Quebec has bad luck in New York. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, oh, and we're yeah. So we're, we're we're we've met some people in Brooklyn, and we're trying to come to some type. Of, so we're we're in the work. That's in the works. Mm -hmm. um, trying to see if that'll that'll turn into something. Positive. The idea is to make something that the museum can really stand by, not just to do an exchange to do an exchange, mm -hmm. but to do something that's actually like, well, okay, that you're that you're happy to see it independently mm -hmm. of its community yes. content and its community ties. Uh, so that's, I've been developing this idea for a group show um, that would uh, touch on a lot of. I don't know if it's going to go through or not. I'm just I'm just crossing my fingers. So it wouldn't happen before. I guess 2013, if it happens at all. And it's a very ambitious show. It's kind of, uh, I've been researching um, artists that have, um, artists that have used um, installation art and post-minimal uh, uh, strategies um, to 
sort of turn the gallery onto itself and make this sort of near invisible artwork. Mm -hmm. But that don't that don't sort of read like mid century Eve Klein. That they, what are these? What are the ideas behind people like uh, like Ernst Fisher just making a hole in the gal, digging a hole mm -hmm. in in, that, in in Gavin Brown's Enterprise, mm -hmm. or uh, at the Whitney Biennial making holes in those walls and exhibiting? Like what is? How does engaging the structure, the physical structure of the gallery space, now kind of go beyond institutional critique? What are the art? What are the historical precedents of this? How do these artists read those historical precedents? How do they riff on them? Um, this was a really big thing in the '90s and in the 2000s. I think it's still so kind of going. It's a kind of a mini historical show without being a really historical show. I'm gonna end up destroying the museum. When the process. Not the whole museum, <laughs> just certain key parts. Okay. <laughs> that one I'm sure will be promptly restored as soon as the show would be it was over, as if nothing ever happened. Uh, yes. So I'm working on that and like kind of uh, putting a list together of artists uh, locally have worked that way, nationally and internationally, and trying to come up with something. So that's really very much kind of in progress. That's, kind that, of, that's a scoop. Yeah, that sounds like it was. It's been <laughs> how long it's going to take me to, to edit this. It might not be a scoop. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it sounds very cool. So yeah. that's something. It's an ambitious show, and I haven't really done a, a proper group show other than Triennial yeah. collectively. So uh, we're trying to see how that can that can, how that can be interesting. How can you use the tools of the museum to actually make something that can't really